Okay, it's time to talk about stuff that women usually keep to themselves. I'm gonna warn you, if you're squeamish or don't like talking about personal stuff, then don't listen. But I wanna bring this up because so many women over the age of 40 are suffering in silence or think they're falling apart. And if you're a guy watching this, stick around because you need to know about this, especially if you've got a wife, girlfriend, sister, mom, any woman in your life that you care about who's in her late 30s, 40s, or 50s, you need to know what's going on inside her mind, her body, and her heart so that you can be understanding and compassionate. Because trust me, a whole lot changes in a woman that will totally freak you out if you're not prepared for it. I'm Rena Hedeman, professional certified coach and founder of Thrive After 45, where we dive into everything women over 45 need to know about mindset, body, and relationships at midlife and beyond. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about, as I said, stuff that's rarely talked about, but it needs to be discussed more often, so there's no shame or embarrassment around it. No matter how old you are, you need to know about this. I, and so many women out there, were caught completely off guard when this happened to us. And I want to save you years of worry and confusion and distress that I went through before I figured out what the heck was going on. So whether you're male or female, 20 years old or 50 years old, you've heard about hot flashes at some point, I know, right? But most people associate them with menopause. You know, that time in a woman's life when she no longer gets a period and her childbearing days are over. Menopause is official when a woman's gone 12 consecutive months without getting a period. So many women in their 30s and 40s think, ugh, hot flashes. I don't have to think about that till I'm, at least I'm in my 50s. But what people often don't talk about is perimenopause. The years leading up to menopause, which can last anywhere from a few months to 12 or 13 years. For me, it's been almost 12 years now, and trust me, there are so many crazy things that can happen during those years that I bet you don't even know about. And if you ask me, most of them are way worse than hot flashes. I'm not saying this to scare you or freak you out, but I seriously wish I had known about this 12 years ago. I'm gonna tell you all the symptoms of perimenopause and also my own personal story, but first I gotta ask this question. Why don't people talk about this? Why didn't our moms tell us much about this? I mean, they told us when we were young girls all about getting our periods one day and how to prepare for that, right? I mean, adolescence, we all know what happens to a teenager when hormones start to shift and change during adolescence. It's not just the physical stuff, you know, the body changes, the teen acne, but it's also the psychological stuff too. Remember that? And if you've got teenagers, you've seen that more recently. The moodiness, the emotional highs and lows of life as a teenager when hormones were changing. Well, so much of that craziness happens again 30 years later when hormones shift and change on the other side in your 40s. For some women, it starts in their 30s. Some of these changes are physical, yes, like hot flashes, but so many affect your mental well-being too. And personally, I think it could be the reason why some marriages break apart at midlife and a big part of why almost half of all people on medication for depression and anxiety are women in their 40s and 50s. I mean, think about that. I bet our moms had no idea that all these less talked about symptoms of perimenopause, like depression and anxiety, were connected to their shifting hormones. Instead, women just tend to think they're going crazy or falling apart. I know I did when I was 46 out of the blue. I started feeling sad all the time for no reason. Even in summer when I'm normally in such high spirits. I had no history of depression or anything. So I spoke to a therapist and she recommended I get my thyroid checked and consider going on antidepressants. Well, my thyroid check was normal and I tried antidepressants, but they didn't really help. I still felt depressed for no apparent reason. Then a few months later, suddenly for the first time in my entire life, I started experiencing what I knew had to be anxiety. Even though I'd never had anxiety before, I had never understood what it was all about. But suddenly it hit me out of nowhere. I mean, it was bad. I found myself worried. I mean, debilitatingly worried about pretty much 
everything. Like if my husband left on a business trip, I'd worry that his plane might crash. And every time one of my kids got in a car driven by someone else, my stomach was literally in knots. I was so scared they'd get in an accident. And I'm not a worry wart normally. Even if we were all home safe in our beds, I couldn't sleep because I was always really worried about something. Have any of you ever felt anxiety like that before? Let me know in the comments. You know, it's so important to share our experiences and let other women know that they're not alone and certainly not going crazy. I mean, at night sometimes, I'd wake up with my heart racing. I had never experienced anything like that before. I knew it wasn't normal and I absolutely hated it. I talked to my doctors and they ran various tests, but everything checked out as normal. But I knew something was off. I wanted my old self back. I also started to notice that I was feeling kind of <laughs> angry all the time. I mean, little things just pissed me off. And I felt totally justified in feeling pissed off, angry, and annoyed, too. God forbid anyone asked me why I was in a bad mood. I'd probably snarl something at them, and that would be that. Sometimes I'd realize, oh, God, I'm being kind of a bitch today. But, you know, just like a moody teenager, I just kind of dwelled in my moodiness because this pissed offness felt so real. It was so real. I mean, obviously I tried not to show it when I was out with a bunch of friends or in meetings for work or something, and neither did any other women I knew. Matter of fact, I told my business coach about it confidentially, and she said, oh, anger, that's bad. Anger can be dangerous. You need to talk to a therapist and get to the bottom of that. <laughs> that made it even worse. So then I felt even more worried that I was falling apart. I had absolutely no idea that feeling easily irritated and angry was a common symptom of perimenopause. Clearly neither did my business coach. So once I learned that, it's not like the anger just miraculously goes away or anything. You have to actually conscientiously work on it. But at least you know that you're not becoming a psychopath. And don't worry, that anger does go away in time. At least it has for me. Okay, so what else? I started noticing my brain and memory were getting foggier, like, like pregnancy brain, only it lasted longer than nine months. I started having trouble sleeping. I'd wake up between 2 and 4 a.m. almost every single night, often from anxiety, but sometimes for no reason at all. I'd be totally wide awake and not even close to being able to get back to sleep. Sometimes I'd wake up at 3.30, 4, and I just would lie there until like 5 and finally say, screw it, I might as well just get up and get something done. And then of course I'd be exhausted all day long, which definitely didn't help my fog brain or my bad mood. And on top of those things, there are so many other physical and mental symptoms that are related to hormones being out of balance as they shift and change and decrease. Many women I know start feeling anxious about driving, even when they've never felt that before in all their 30 years of driving. So that's a drag and a half and seems to come out of nowhere. Recently, just a few years ago, my skin started itching like crazy. And that's still happening actually. And I'm 57 now and still in perimenopause, if you can believe that. Drives me nuts. Your skin definitely changes as your hormones are shifting and decreasing. So do your joints and your muscles. I'll tell you about that too. That's why it's so important to pay extra attention to your skincare and exercise routines, even as early as your late 30s. I'm going to tell you all about that in upcoming videos in the next few weeks. So if you want to know about how to improve your aging skin as well as your joints and muscles, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you're notified about my new videos when I post them. There are definitely things you can and should do in your 30s and 40s before you hit menopause to look and feel way better when you're in your 50s and 60s. Don't wait and wonder what's going on like I did. But if you're already in your 50s or beyond, it's not too late. There are definitely things you can do starting right now to help not only your skin look a whole lot better and make your joints and muscles feel better, but also I can share my secrets on all sorts of other perimenopause and menopause symptoms too. Like what you might be wondering? <laughs> Keep watching. I'm getting to it. Okay, so more symptoms of perimenopause that can hit any time in your 50s, 40s, or even your late 30s? Really heavy periods, often with big clots and seriously bad cramps to go along with it. 
Hey, I know, sorry if this is TMI, but I think it's so important to know about it. I could tell you some truly embarrassing stories, but that would definitely be TMI, so I won't go there. Oh, and I do wanna add that I'm not a doctor, so you should talk to your doctor if you notice anything new or unusual about your body, as always, just to rule out anything serious. I did that, and it's helpful. Okay, so what else is common in the years leading up to menopause? Well, really light or irregular periods sometimes, thinning hair, <laughs> breast tenderness, and even an increase in size can happen. Allergies, hormones in the immune system are closely related apparently, so it's not uncommon to experience an increase in allergies during perimenopause. Bloating. That can feel similar to PMS, you know, that distended tummy and often, sorry, <laughs> increase in burping or farting. Let's see, what else? Headaches incontinence <laughs> that one is the worst like when you sneeze or cough or laugh you pee a tiny bit even when you jump on the trampoline you know what i'm talking about Ugh. i'm doing a video on that topic all on its own very soon too because so many women i know have to deal with this but there are things you can do about it no need to suffer in silence as i keep saying and you know what if you don't do those things i'm going to tell you about the incontinence gets worse over time so subscribe to my channel and be on the lookout for that upcoming video on how to combat that leaky bladder so let's see what else oh yeah decreased libido that's no fun neither is vaginal dryness weight gain increased belly fat fun fun and as i already mentioned irritability mood swings anxiety joint pain itchy skin insomnia depression thinning hair and there are actually more but those are the most common I know, that's a long list. You might not experience all those symptoms, but I want you to be aware of them all just so that you know what's going on if you experience some of them. I don't want you to worry and think something's really wrong like I did. If you're like me, I'm 57 and have been in perimenopause for almost 12 years now, as I said before. I've done a ton of research on how to deal with these symptoms, and I've been to many different doctors and specialists and tried a whole slew of solutions. And I'll definitely share everything I've learned with you in future videos. I'll tell you what I've learned and what's worked for me, so subscribe and stay tuned. And by the way, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. What has perimenopause or menopause been like for you? Please share your experience in the comments below as it really helps others when we're all open about this stuff. If any of this is resonating with you and you'd like to get more content from me specifically on how to thrive after 45 in mind, body, and love, i.e. relationships, please follow me on Instagram and go to my website, thriveafter45.com. You'll see the link in the description below and join my VIP list. I share all the secrets I know on how to look and feel your absolute best mentally and physically in your late 40s and your 50s and beyond. And if you like today's video, you might want to watch this one or this one next. Thanks for watching. Now remember, take great care of your gorgeous self because you deserve it and you are definitely so worth it.